Welcome to Electron Online, and in this example, we're seeing something that's fairly common. In other words, an object that's suspended from two cables, in this case, two cables making a different angle with the ceiling from which it's suspended from. Notice that the mass of the object is 500 kilogram, and we're trying to find the tension in each of the three cables. Of course, to find the tension in cable three is fairly easy because if we draw a free body diagram of this right here, and let me go ahead and do that, you can see that the only two forces acting on this object right here is simply the tension pulling it up, and of course, then the force of gravity pulling it down, mg, which means that in this case, tension three must equal mg, which makes it easy, and we can then write that T sub three is equal to mg, and therefore, T sub 3 is equal to the mass of the object, which is 500 kilograms, times acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And that gives us tension 3 to be equal to, uh, that would be 4,900 newtons. All right. So that allows us to find tension 3. But to find tension 1 and tension 2, that is a little bit more challenging. For that, we need to find the two components of each of the forces. Because again, it's a situation, it's, an, it's a, a problem where everything is in equilibrium. And if, if everything is in equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction must add up to zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero, which means we need to find the x and y components of each of the forces there. Now notice, of course, tension three will be acting in a downward direction. There's only one component, so we don't have to divide that into the components. And we note that that will be equal to 4,900 newtons in a negative direction. But for tension one and tension two, realizing that tension one relative to this point where everything is connected will be acting in this direction, tension two will be acting in this direction. So these are the directions of tension one and tension two. So to find the components for tension one, that would be equal to this component right here and this component right here. So this would be tension one in the y direction and this would be tension one in the x direction. We'll find out in just a moment what those are equal to. Using a different color, and let's use, um, hmm, let's use brown here. Here we can see that this would be tension two in the x direction, and this here would be tension two in the y direction. So we have to find all four components. So to find tension one in the x direction, we need to find the angle. Notice that this angle here and this angle would be the same, right? So these are alternate interior angles, so this is 30 degrees. And then this here, if this is 20 degrees and this is 20 degrees as well, those are alternate interior angles. So here we can see that T1x will be equal to T1. That would be the hypotenuse T1 times the cosine of 30 degrees because that's the adjacent angle relative to this force right here. T1 in the y direction, that would be the opposite component. So this would be equal to T1 times the sine of 30 degrees. We can do the same for T2. T2 in the x direction would be equal to T2 times the cosine of 20 degrees. And T2 in the y direction would be T2 times the sine of 20 degrees. All right. Uh, since we don't know what those forces are, we just leave it like that. And then we can go ahead and plug that into our two equations right up there. So in the x direction, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to. Notice that T2x is in the positive x direction, so that would be a positive T2x, and T2 in the y T1 in the y direction is negative, so it would be minus T1x. And so that would be equal to T2 times the cosine of 20 degrees minus T1 times the cosine of 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and figure out what those are. So 20, take the cosine of that, that is equal to 0.9397. So that would be equal to 0 0.9397 times T2 minus, take the cosine of 30, that would be 0 0.8660 times T1, and that would be equal to zero because the sum of the force in the x direction would have to add up to zero. So there's my first equation the one I got from the summation of the forces in the x direction. We'll now do the same for the force in the y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to, we have this force right here, which is T2 in the y direction, that's positive. 
And do we have anything in the negative there? Oh, we have another one, T1Y, so it would be plus T1Y. They're both, both components are in the positive Y direction. And then we, of course, have the minus 4,900 newtons in the Y direction, which is the weight of the object. All right, and plug in what those are equal to, so that would be equal to zero. So zero is equal to T2Y. T2Y would be T2 times the sine of 20 degrees plus T1 times the sine of 30 degrees minus 4,000, that's a three, minus 4,900 newtons equal zero. All right, find out what the sine of 20 is. So the sine of 20 would be 0 0.3420. So zero equals 0 0.3420 times T2 plus the sine of 30 degrees is one half, so 0 0.5 times T1 minus 4,900 newtons equals zero. I already have equals zero. All right, so there's my second equation. Now those two equations have two unknowns. They both have unknown T1 and T2, T1 and T2, so we have to solve one of the equations for one of the variables and then substitute that into the second equation. So what would be the easiest thing to do? Well, let's go ahead, doesn't really matter. So let's take this equation right here and solve for T2 in terms of T1. So we have 0 0.9397 T2. Well, if I put this on the other side, it becomes positive, so it would be equal to a positive 0 0.8660 T1. Therefore, T2 is equal to 0 0.8660 T1 divided by 0 0.9397. So 0 0.866 divided by 0 0.9397 equals, so I know that T2 is equal to 0 0.9216 times T1. So that allows me to find what T2 is in terms of T1, and then I can go ahead and plug that into my equation right, right here. Okay, went a little too far. So I, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into T2 in my second equation. So that means that zero is equal to 0 0.3420 times, T2 is now going to be 0 0.9216 T1 plus 0 0.5 T1 minus 4,900. All right, now I have to solve that equation for T1, which means I'm going to take the 4,900 Newtons that are negative to the other side becomes positive, flip the whole equation around, multiply this to add it together, and what do we get? So times 0 0.342 equals, so that gives me 0 0.3152 times T1 plus 0 0.5 T1 is equal to 4,900 Newtons. So I went ahead and multiplied this together and moved the 4,900 Newtons to the other side, flipped the equation around. So this becomes 0 0.8152 T1 equals 4,900 Newtons. And finally, I divide both sides by the coefficient of T1, so plus 0.5 equals, and take the inverse, times 4,900 equals, so that means that T1 is equal to 6,011 Newtons. Now that I have T1, I can plug that back into my other equation to find T2. So T2 is going to be equal to 0 0.9216 times T1, and T1 is 6,000 and 11 newtons. So this becomes this equation right there. So times 0.9216 equals, and so that means T2 is equal to 5,540 newtons. So T3, 4,900 newtons. T2, which is this one right here, that would be T2 is 5,540 newtons, and T1 is 6,011 newtons. That's kind of an interesting result. So why does T1 have more, of, more tension than T2? Well, notice that the angle here is bigger, which means that T1 carries more of the weight of this object than T2 does. 
T2, however, probably pulls a little bit harder to the right to move it further away from, to move it into this direction. So a little bit extra tension to move to the, to the right, but not as much as T1 because T1 carries more of the load. And that's how we interpret the results of this problem.